Pay number numbers one and two. State owned enterprises amendment bill, third reading. Public finance, mixed ownership model amendment bill, third reading. Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Tony Ryan. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I move that the state owned enterprises amendment bill and the public finance mixed ownership model amendment bill be now read a third time. Mr. Speaker, these bills are part of the government's wider plan to control debt and to keep investing in our economy. It's part of a wider plan to control debt and keep investing in the New Zealand economy. There are some people who think that the global financial crisis is over and they don't understand the relentlessly worsening international financial situation. There's more and more countries confronting the problems of debt. Greece, Spain, Portugal, the United Kingdom, Italy, countries that are fast running out of choices because they refuse to control debt and get their public finances in order. Their situations are precarious and the ability of these countries to continue in investing, in growing and their protecting of their economies is significantly at risk. But New Zealand, New Zealand wants to take action to ensure that we can continue to invest in our country's growth and prosperity and at the same time can control our debt. And this government has carefully planned its spending and borrowing through the financial crisis and the Christchurch earthquake and through good financial management over the next few years our country will return to surplus and we will keep our debt under control. When we inherited this economy after the nine years of absent management by the party opposite, our country owed $8 billion. Through protecting our country from the sharp edges of the recession, we now owe $52 billion. And in three years' time, we expect to own $72 billion. New Zealand must control its debt. And the mixed ownership model is about freeing up some of our capital tied up in the minority of these companies and using that money to control debt by allowing us to continue to invest in schools, roads and hospitals, important infrastructure in New Zealand. And that's what this legislation allows us to do, to control our debt and continue to invest in important things in our schools, hospitals and our roads. This bill enables the sale of a minority of these companies to the value of between five and seven billion dollars, which will give us cash up front in an uncertain world when we would have otherwise had to borrow from foreign lenders. Over the time of this debate, this debate that hasn't happened through urgency, this debate that's involved the public, this government's made it absolutely clear that we are not going to be diverted by the scaremongering and nonsense of the three headed party opposite. Fact, this government will maintain majority New Zealand control of these companies through its legislated 51% shareholding with a 10% cap on any other shareholder. Contrast that with the experience when that party was in power in the 80s and sold $10 billion of assets to the highest bidder, 100% without getting a mandate from an election. Without getting a mandate from this election. From an election. This government expects 85 to 90 per cent of these companies that float will be owned by New Zealanders. The government will make sure that it gives effect to this policy through our ability to control the allocation and ensure that everyday New Zealanders who want an opportunity to participate in these businesses will have that opportunity to ensure that uh, super funds and Kiwi Savers and other New Zealand institutions where New Zealanders save for their retirements also have an opportunity to get shares. This policy helps control debt. Now our critics have exaggerated the numbers, they've been very selective, but it's very clear in the budget documents, simple and clear, the estimated impact of the mixed ownership programme 
is a $6 billion reduction in our net debt. And in their desperate attempts to try and discredit for which this government has a mandate, we've had this latest claim that this will drive up electricity prices. Remember question time last Thursday, where the opposition said all the information shows that state-owned electricity companies are cheaper than private companies. Well, what we know is a more comprehensive analysis shows that there is no difference, that what really matters is the level of competition, not the ownership. And our government, in our first term, set about fixing the competition, making sure that the regulations were right, such that in the six, seven month period, 425,000 New Zealanders have changed power company. In 14 of the 21 power regions, the private companies are the cheapest. That's what happens with competition. New Zealanders get more choice and they're getting more competition and that's what we want to see. And the other nonsense that we've heard from the party opposite is that this is a rush process. Are we doing this through urgency? Which was when that party opposite sold assets, they put everything through urgency. Did we invite the public to make submissions? Did the Prime Minister announce this policy in January 2011? Did we have an election on this issue? Was it the centrepiece of Labour's election campaign and they got the lowest vote that they've ever got? This was a, what the entire election campaign was about. That from Labour's perspective, every dollar that they cobbled together went campaigning on this issue and the Greens, and Labour got the lowest vote they ever had, and National got the highest vote any single party has ever got under an MMP election. We do have a mandate. We do have the support of New Zealanders in our wider economic package to control debt and get this economy on the tracks that we need to have future prosperity. And that's what this is about. Unless we control our debt and free up money that we can continue investing in our schools and our hospitals and our roads, then New Zealand is at risk. We are at risk of being seen by the international lenders on a par with other countries that are losing control of their destiny. So this government has a mandate from the people of New Zealand, no doubt about that. This government has a focus on protecting majority New Zealand control through a 51% legislative guarantee in the law passed in this bill with a 10% cap on any one shareholder. That money, the future stream of dividends that we're uh, making available to the minority shareholders will be captured up front in the price that we get for the shares. And that money will be put into the future investment fund and that money will be available for investing in schools, roads and hospitals. So this is what works for New Zealand. We control debt and at the same time we protect, grow and invest in our economy. And that's what New Zealanders would want us to do. So over the next few weeks, we're going to continue to hear a whole lot of nonsense from our opponents. Our opponents who, when they sold public assets, did it without a legislative mandate, did it to the highest bidder, and never gave everyday New Zealanders a looking. Never gave everyday New Zealanders a looking. That's what this government will do. This is about giving everyday New Zealanders a chance to own shares in these businesses, whether directly or through their super funds or their Kiwi savers or their other Crown financial institutions. Mr Speaker, this government wants to be absolutely clear with New Zealanders. This is part of a wider plan to make sure that we protect and grow our economy in these difficult times. And when you don't have a government with that sort of commitment, you end up seeing what you're seeing on your television news, what New Zealanders are seeing on their television news, six o'clock bulletin after six o'clock bulletin. Countries that don't control their debt and don't invest in the future begin to lose control of their destiny. And this government will not put our country in that position.
The question is, order. The question is that the motion be agreed Mr. to. Mr. Speaker, I call the honourable member David Shearer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.